mind has wandered. And then seeing Jesus dazzling white in front of them and saying, Oh, wow. Well, God was here the whole time. And I didn't even notice it. How about that? Huh. In the story, Jesus changes. And then the disciples are able to see him clearly for who he is. In my experience, something in me changes. And then I'm able to realize that Christ is right there in this moment in front of me and has been there the whole time. And though this is happening more slowly than I would like, I think one outcome of the Christian faith is that the longer we practice this faith, the more we see God with us and know and trust that God is with us. Our faith journey is a transfiguring one. It changes us so that we can see God's presence and glory where we didn't before. So this year as I approach Lent, I looked for a book that would again help me focus on my practice of meditation. And I found a book by a Zen Buddhist monk, Thich Nhat Hanh, and the title is You Are Here. Now, if ever there's a title that would grab a hold of Future Boy and say, buy me, it's a title, You Are Here. Not there, here. And it's a great book. I highly recommend it. If you're looking to try to learn how to meditate, or if you just want to be more present in the moment as you're living your life, I strongly recommend this book. What I find fascinating about Thich Nhat Hanh is that he goes back and forth between Christian language and Buddhist language very easily and frequently. It's like it's no big deal. All this clamoring about how the religions relate to one another out there, and he's like, ah, whatever. He's not trying to convert Christians to Buddhism. He wants us to be able to understand our shared concerns and the ways that both Christianity and Buddhism want to help us. For instance, Thich Nhat Hanh writes, the first miracle brought about by mindfulness, that is, being present in the moment, is your own presence, your real presence. With this energy dwelling in you, you become completely alive. When the energy of mindfulness is dwelling in you, Buddha is dwelling in you. The energy of mindfulness is the energy of Buddha. It is the equivalent of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that fascinating? Where the Holy Spirit is, there is also understanding, life, healing, compassion. Everything you are seeking, you should seek in the present moment. To put it in Christian terms, he says, the kingdom of God is in the present moment. We don't need to die in order to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, we need to be very much alive. With a mindful breath, with a step taken mindfully, we can enter the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is now or never. Perhaps, perhaps what holds Transfiguration Sunday, Valentine's Day, and Thich Nhat Hanh together is, is this little idea where he writes, the miracle of mindfulness is first of all that you are here. Being truly here is very important. Being here for yourself and for the one you love. Now if any of you have hot Valentine's Day dates later on, pay attention. How can you love if you are not here, he says fundamental condition for love is your own presence. Kingdom of God is now or never a fundamental condition for love is your own presence. I think one of the messages of the, transfigur the transfiguration story is sending is that God is with us in this moment and every moment, before the mountain, on the mountain, after the mountain. And this type of prayer, practicing meditation, allows me to practice trusting that God is really present in that moment. I try to pull my mind and body back together and live in the moment more and more. And as I do, I find that the world changes, or at least I see it differently. Suddenly I see God's dazzling beauty here and there. I see the beauty in the skeletons of the winter trees. When my mind and body is together, I start to listen and hear my children again. I hear my two-year-old daughter when she says, There are sparkles in the snow. Who put them there? And I stand, share that wonder with her. I taste my food and I marvel at the gift of a delicious meal, even with craziness going all around in the supper table. And I'm present in my relationships and I enjoy God's gift of love that surrounds me and I participate in that love. I'm ready to play when all my children want to do is reconnect when I've been gone for the day. When my mind is here along with my body, I'm not thinking about the future or the past, I'm present, and I'm able to listen. Even the sorrows somehow change. They aren't any less painful, but they're different. I begin to see that when I'm grieving a loss of any sort, I'm grieving because I've loved, 
I'm grieving because I've first been given a gift. It doesn't make the sorrows or struggles or struggles better, but it changes them a bit. And future boy begins to let go of the obsession with the future, the obsession with the dreams, the obsession with the fears. If God is this present now, God will be present later too. If God is surrounding me like this now, then I can trust that God will surround me in the future. I can let go and let the future happen as it needs to. God will work it out. The farther I go on the Christian journey, the more I experience transfigured moments. I'm able to let go of not just the future, but the past sometimes too, and be present now and discover that God's gifts surround me. And I find joy and comfort in what when I find what I need. More and more of the time, I'm able to trust that God's dazzling presence is right with me. The kingdom of God is in every moment. And as we step into it, it will allow us to push the fears aside and live with more joy and happiness more of the time. And that's a gift. That's a great gift. It's good news. God is right here with us. Thanks be to God. Amen.